2018. The best start to a year, the best feeling that I have, and overall, it's not been a bad January because in my pocket. Oh, yes! The keys to myself and my girlfriend's new home have arrived. We collected them this morning and I've done the all important essentials of bringing my Xbox, my laptop, and my camera with me. I'm by myself because my girlfriend is at work, and today I have organized for some deliveries to be done to the house so that it is a little bit more livable because literally there is nothing in here apart from a TV and an Xbox. So today I am basically in this place all day, which isn't a bad thing because I'm gonna get accustomed to chilling out by myself, not having my mum with me. Um, but, well, this is so far everything that we have in our living space and kitchen. There isn't a lot to see, if I'm honest, and if I had it another way, then I'd probably have wanted this entire place to be kitted out before I show you guys, but you are gonna be with me as things start getting filled up, so you'll see it as it is now, and hopefully in a couple of months, three months, four months, you will see it get busier, more exciting, more homey. Um, but to begin with, this is what we have got to work with. So if any of you guys are interior designers, please let me know. We need all the help that we can get. Now I can fully get back into giving you guys the best content I can possibly provide. And I feel even two or three weeks into 2018 that I'm gonna be back on track very soon, bringing you guys epic road trips, the incredible drift journey, supercars galore, and a huge variety of content. So whilst I've got a solid eight hours here, I'm gonna post on Instagram, hosting a Q&A, my first one of 2018 and my first one for a long time. And we're gonna try and answer as many questions as possible so that I can give you as many answers as possible around YouTube, around property, around cars, whatever it is you wanna know. We're gonna do this semi-live because I haven't posted a picture on Instagram yet. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna do a Q&A whilst I wait for the Skyman and the next guys to come and do some deliveries. And you will see the transformation of what it looks like when you put a sofa in an empty space. Okay, however, before we start, there is something that I need to address because the comments have been coming in thick and fast about this. That stupid white panel that is on the roof of my AMG. That is going gloss black to match the back window, the panoramic roof, to create one smooth sweeping black roof line over the top of my C63. And I am with all of you guys that have commented what the hell were Mercedes thinking when they didn't make that black. Right, Charlie Booth, can you drift the C63? I can, and actually, the first left-hand corner that I had on my drive, which I didn't put in the video, I actually got it sideways in second gear. Brad Baker on Twitter has asked a very good question. When is my new series with Tony coming up? The one where you said about the best car. Now this is something that I'm working with, on with uh, I'm working with Tony on coming up with a sensible buyer's guide to different price brackets on Auto Trader. I spend all of my time when I'm not doing anything on Auto Trader, piston heads, or playing CSR2. However, I thought that I sensibly showed what it was like actually going to buy a C63 when I went down to Romans and then went to Tony's after and we discussed about depreciation, everything like that. So Brad, fantastic question. I'm hoping to pick this series up in the first couple of weeks in February. And what we're gonna be doing is myself and Tony are gonna be 
talking about a specific price bracket. Tony has got all of the industry knowledge. I've got a fair amount of market knowledge and automobile knowledge. So hopefully combined, we can come up with a sensible series talking about what is the best car that you can buy for £5,000, for £10,000, for £1,000, for £25,000. So that is something that I'm working on and hopefully can spread it across an entire year of 2018. Who doesn't want to see more Tony? Right, I thought that I heard a van and the thing with these very high windows is that <laughs> I can't see out of them. <laughs> so I have to jump up. Great designing! Um, but let's carry on. There's a good question here from Tom Denny who has asked me whether I would get a left-hand drive Murcielago if it was cheaper than a right-hand drive or would I pay extra for right-hand drive? And I think with the Murcielago, because this car is going to be my special car, the one that I drive every now and again and it is also going to be my pride and joy, I don't necessarily think it matters as a driving experience, whether it's left-hand drive or right-hand drive in the UK. If the right car came up in left-hand drive in a good condition, mechanically sound, I would buy it. I wouldn't think twice about buying a left-hand drive car because I'm not gonna do the daily stuff like going into car parks and trying to reach across to get parking tickets. It's not gonna happen. The only thing with a left-hand drive car is the blind spots when you're pulling out of T-junctions and things like that, which you saw when I drove the left-hand drive on in VVX. Would I pay extra for a right-hand drive on? Right-hand drive cars are obviously a lot rarer, meaning that the value of them is higher than a left-hand drive car. The market's even smaller, so when I come to sell it, a right-hand drive car really only goes back to the UK, whereas a left-hand drive car, I could potentially sell it back into Europe. So very good question. I would buy a left-hand drive Murcielago if it was the right car, and I would probably want to buy a left-hand drive car over potentially spending a little bit more money on a right-hand drive car. Let's have a look at what is going on Instagram. Now, this is the first time that I've gone on Instagram, so there could be five questions. There could be 105 questions. There's 308. <laughs> 308 questions in an hour. So we're not gonna do all 308. What I'm going to do is try and answer questions that are relevant to the videos that I've done, but also relevant to 2018. Ger1.lajqi. And that is, where do you see yourself when you're gonna be 30? In brackets, probably a pro drifter. And actually, this question is so relevant because I turned 27 last week. I've got three years. Now, when I was 18, 17, the only goal that I had was I wanted to have a Lamborghini by 25. That was all. So when I hit that goal just before I turned 25, I sat around scratching my head quite a lot, not really having a direction, not really knowing what I wanted to do, not knowing what I wanted to do with YouTube. And because I enjoy making videos so much, bringing you guys in on my life, everything that I get up to, documenting my supercar ownership, my road trips, everything that happens on YouTube or what happens in my life that is exciting enough, I tend to film. And like this, I'm standing in my living space with no sofa. This to me is incredibly exciting and hopefully you guys can get as excited as I am about this move. Now, going back to where I wanna be when I'm 30 years old, and that does come down to last Sunday's video announcing that I wanted to become a professional drift car driver. This is not entirely narrowing it down to be performing in Formula Drift in Japan. The idea of learning to become a professional drift car driver, potentially competing in some form or some capacity in the next couple of years or so, is so that I can implement it into the videos that I already make. When I drive across Europe or whenever I go on an international media drive or whether I test drive a car, the fact that I will have the skill set to be able to take a car sideways, hopefully will massively improve my videos, it will massively improve my driving, meaning that you guys get better quality content rather than me jumping in an 812 Superfast like I did last year and had no idea how to drive it, no idea how to handle it. In 12 months time, even less, 
I want to be able to jump in an A12 super fast, know exactly how to drive it, treat it like my bitch, and have it drifting everywhere through the videos. That is exactly why I announced that I wanted to be a professional drift car driver, because the opportunities to do stunt driving, the opportunities to drive live in events like Goodwood Festival of Speed, they are all incredible video opportunities that by the time that I'm 30, I want to have the coolest YouTube channel or the coolest, I don't know what it is, what is it going to be in, when I'm 30, what is it going to be in three years time? I would love to still have my YouTube channel and I would love to make Jim Carner style videos but in a LaFerrari aperta. Ilias underscore Moss, will we see a video in 2018 of you sliding your C63 around your LP640? Yes. And the Skyman's here. We're getting into that. <laughs> yes. Next to here, the sofa's in. And already, it looks, still doesn't look that much like a living room, but we will go back to the bedroom where we now have a bed in boxes and a mattress because there is one more question that I want to answer, a question that I feel like it is the perfect ending to this very sensible, minus the C63 drifting, Q&A. So I'm gonna set you guys up here on the tripod, hopefully the lighting's not too bad. And the question is, Dripping Colors has asked, do you think financial planning should be taught through schools, whether it's mortgages, finances, pensions, etc. Now, I can only talk from the current UK education system or what I went through. And over the last six months, I've had nothing but financial questions, queries, things that I potentially could have learned during school, but have learned on an incredibly steep learning curve as I've been trying to sort this place out. And I think the craziest thing looking back at school is the amount of junk that I learnt that I haven't used. When are you ever going to use the likes of find X in a triangle? This is not to dishearten anyone that is currently in school because one of the things that I stuck to my guns with is working hard to set myself up to do whatever I wanted to do later in life. And I went to university, had an incredible time, learned so much at university, but still, even between 20 to 23 years old, I was never taught anything about mortgages, taxes, pensions, things that you get thrown into the deep end with no armbands. Maybe the schools and the governing bodies have identified that the quickest way of learning these type of things is by doing them right there and then having to do them to a tight deadline. If you learn them in school, maybe you might get some people that listen, you might get some people that never do their homework, but it comes down to now that I've gone through this process of buying my first property, I've gone through the processes in the past of buying cars, that you do, and that's maybe my way of learning. My way of learning is just doing something, getting hands on with it, and that's always been my way of learning. This has been an incredibly stressful six months to the point where I didn't want to make another YouTube video. Around October, November, I was so down in this incredibly depressing downward spiral because all of my stress and pressure was in the house and everything that was going on, chasing solicitors, chasing the estate agents, chasing everyone that was involved in making this possible, knowing that I couldn't document it on YouTube but I couldn't bring you guys in on how I was feeling, but then having to go out and try to film something when I wasn't happy in myself, I wasn't fully there with the amount of stress that I had and you probably saw that in the videos that I was making in September, October, November, that I was struggling. And to now feel completely relaxed and excited, apart from the fact that I've got to build this bed with my own hands, it just feels incredibly relieving, I think is the best way to describe it. So yes, I do believe that we need to be taught the basics in school about how to save money, pensions, jobs, taxes, self-employment, and mortgages, because it is all important and these are all things that everyone is gonna to have to go through at some point in their life. So I'm gonna grab this back and move back into the echoing room because I'm now gonna start editing this Q&A. But that 
finishes off and rounds off the first Q&A of 2018. And there were so many questions, I wish I could answer them, or I could almost do an entire series throughout January of answering all of the incredible questions that you guys had submitted on Instagram and Twitter. Hopefully you guys have an amazing weekend. There are some freaking awesome content, nearly swore there, coming soon because I'm jumping on a plane tomorrow with a few familiar faces, you will know. And we're gonna be driving a very interesting car of 2018, but there is also a lot more happening in the following week, starting at Dub Customs. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you have watched and enjoyed this Q&A. Let me know if you wanna see more Q&As, and if you have got any burning questions, then please comment below or slide into my Instagram DMs and I will do my best to answer them privately or potentially make another one of these videos. But right now, my laptop is on, Premiere Pro is loaded. I have already got quite a few of the files in that I am editing. I'm starving, it's 3 p.m. All of the deliveries are here, but over time... Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi. Các bạn hãy bấm like, comment và hãy bấm đăng ký để ủng hộ cho kênh mình nha. 